Great. Uh, thanks very much, Marty. Uh, it's great to follow Peter. He set up some themes that I want to touch on today. Uh, my theme is human and environmental interactions and abrupt change, uh, beginning to leak into some of our site news. Um, as Michael and Jesse noted, we are in that lovely period of having just gotten our renewal funds uh, earlier this year and a unifying theme of the research for our renewal proposal is what are the causes and consequences of abrupt change in our North Temperate Lakes. And similarly, there are many reasons and many of them could fit into these human environmental interaction sub themes. Uh, but a little more site news going forward. Uh, first, want to welcome some new team members. We are very excited after a period of time of waiting for the arrival of Olaf Jensen, Grace Williams, uh, Wilkinson, and Ray Allen. And uh, Grace is my plus one in this meeting today. So uh, these guys are going to bring some new variety and breadth to NTL research. And kudos to them for starting in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, we have gotten a new experiment going, uh, despite having to do it under challenging and distancing situations of a food web restoration experiment. In the theme of abrupt changes, uh, management activities themselves are often deliberately intended to be abrupt changes. And the question then becomes is, are they enduring or not? And what are the other consequences that go with these sorts of abrupt change? So some of our folks in the Northern Lakes and Northern Wisconsin have been reintroducing a mid-level grazer back into uh, some of the lake food webs that was extirpated as a result of invasive species. Uh, so we're super excited to see how that unfolds over the next decade or so. Okay, in the theme of human environmental interactions, again, we are, have uh, lots of this involving these managed ecosystems like these recreational fisheries in the North. Uh, I'm going to focus a little bit here on human dominated ecosystems in our southern lakes. Uh, you can see the land cover map of the Yahara Lakes District here in Madison uh, in the south, which is basically a very, very agricultural watershed that's sort of that orangey color. But increasingly surrounding these lakes, uh, we also have urban and suburban land cover and uh, this is really beginning to exert an influence on what we see in the watershed, <clears throat> excuse me, in the watershed and the receiving water bodies. And this seemed like a great chance to connect with some of the wiser minds in this field, as this is an area of emphasis for us in this new renewal round. So we've started working on this. Uh, of course, as I said, we've done a lot of work on agricultural influences, and now we are trying to expand our, uh, okay our uh, scope into the urban landscape. Uh, we've begun by looking at the scale of the entire watershed, uh, comparing land cover effects on uh, sort of the energy balance of the watershed and urban heat island effects. You can see we've established this very densely, dense uh, network of temperature sensors throughout the city of Madison, as well as out into agricultural areas to show that very warm heat island effect surrounding the lakes. Uh, we have begun to look at smaller water bodies in the watershed as well. So these are stormwater and other ponds that eventually, many of which eventually drain into Lake Mendota and Lake Monona. Uh, and doing surveys of these works to figure out who's there. And then we're recognizing a series of sort of uh, characteristic states that these ponds exist in as a function of their hydrology and also their surrounding and sort of how they're uh, maintained in their immediate surroundings. And then finally, the whole point of this is to look at the lakes themselves. And as Peter made a really good point, chloride is this uh, contaminant or this uh, chemical that just seems to inexorably increase despite all of our efforts and all these uh, to reduce the loading of salt onto streets and so forth. And similarly, all of our southern lakes are experiencing this increase in salt load over the past 40 years. And now we're beginning to see consequences of that in terms of the lakes themselves, despite, despite being pretty large water bodies. Uh, in particular, a paper led by Robert Ladwig, who's a postdoc working with Hilary Dugan, has shown how salinization of Lake Monona, in particular, 
is changing the duration of stratification in this lake. So it is staying stratified longer as it goes into spring when really could be changing a lot of subsequent nutrient and productivity uh, dynamics as a result of that more stable water column. So we are looking forward to learning and doing more about urban ecology with an eye very much of how urban watersheds affect aquatic ecosystems. Uh, we're gonna be merging those with the history, recent history of some extreme rain events we've been having and how flooding plays into this. How the patchwork of urban cover may really affect what gets delivered to the lake along with changing urban tree cover. Now uh, we're seeing lots of changes here because of invasive uh, the emerald ash borer affecting how many trees we have in Madison. Uh, this will be synth synthesized through some modeling efforts. Uh, we are going to combine uh, Hillary Dugan's interest in winter limnology with our work on ponds around the lakes to understand how they emerge from winter and get rolling. And uh, Monica Turner will be leading some work on urban ecosystem services. Uh, so we look forward to diving into that. Oh, and I will add also that one of our grad students, uh, Adriana Gorski, will be working and leading a review paper on urban limnology. So if any of your sites have water and are interested in that, let me know. So thank you. <laughs>